Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Well, finally I'm getting to this model kit. I'm now doing the Glotkin. I've decided to do this over the Puskile Blight Lords because this has just been sitting in my room for a year now and well, I'm just gonna do it. However, because this model is so massive and there is so much detail in it that I'm actually gonna break this down into three parts because this is actually three separate models. There's the big guy, and then there's two people who stand on top who are so detailed and so well crafted that they could be individual uh, character kits themselves. So for this, I'm going to start off with Otto, the guy with the scythe. Now to start off with, because of the size of this model kit, and the guy with the scythe is going to be increasing the height even further, I want to magnetize him. So with a Dremel drill bit, some rare earth magnets, and some sanders, I'm basically just going to apply magnets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by scoring a hole with the Dremel drill bit and then push all the way through. And then once that's done, I'm going to take a round uh, sanding tool and I'm going to slowly drill in. And as it drills in, it widens the hole. And once it widens far enough, I then put in the magnet and then I will seal it with super glue. And then make sure that uh, the magnets are properly aligned because when we do it on the other foot and stuff, we want to make sure our magnets uh, glue together instead of repel. Once accomplished, I realize the magnetism is too weak, so basically I do the whole process again on his other foot. And now with some flexible modeling paste, I'm going to use this to fill in the gaps on his right shoulder pad and like this part on his left side. Now on to priming. I'm going to use Bright Touch General Car Primer, gray color. I'm going to use masking tape and I'm going to tape the model down. And then I'm going to prime it on one side. And then when I'm finished, I'll do the other side. And now with Xandri Dust, Agrax Earthshade, Karak Stone, and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint the skin. Now we're going to start off by layering all the skin with Xandri Dust. Now, a quick note, overall we want to start off with the largest parts of the model that's relatively the same color, and so his naked flesh is the largest part. So we're going to start with that. And once the Xandri dust is dried, we're going to apply Agrax Earthshade over the entire model. Once that's done, we're going to go back with Xandri dust but with an airbrush and we're going to spray it from 45 or 90 degrees. We want it to be very high up, uh, the high up angle. We don't want it to be face forward, we want it to paint, paint almost straight down all over the model. And once that's completed, we're going to move on to Karak stone and we're going to spray from the highest angle possible straight up top. On, on select areas. We don't want to overpower it, we just want a little bit here and there to add lightness to the most raised areas. And now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to apply this into all the folds of his fat and essentially places where you would imagine, imagine bruising, there's where the folds of skin are, where things are like clamped down on his skin, places that could be bruised, and we're going to do up uh, we're going to fill in the gaps and then we're going to do like feathery brush strokes on the undersides. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh, Gulliman Contrast Paint, Magos Purple and Agrax Earthshade, we are going to begin painting you know, a variety of things, but mostly the flesh. First, with Pallid Witch Flesh, we're going to paint all the intestines that are sticking out of his, well, are sticking out of him. And we're also going to use this, and we're going to layer his scythe with this color as well. I forgot to show this color before, but we're also going to take White Scar, and what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush White Scar White onto the staff, 
as well as the upper raised areas of his organs. And then with Agrax Earthshade, we're going to apply this all over his staff. There's going to be two layers, but we're going to apply one layer right now. While Agrax Earthshade is drying, we're going to go with Gullum and Flesh and we're going to coat his intestines that are spilling out with this color. It's a very good flesh foundation. We then apply our second layer of Agrax Earthshade all over the staff. And while that is drying, we will go and take Magos Purple and we're going to apply it all over the intestines that are spilling out. And don't forget, there's some like in the middle of his belly that are also spilling out, not just what's in his hand. Now with Skeleton Horde Contrast, water down, one to one. We're going to begin applying uh, a Skeleton Horde Contrast on all his undersides. We want to start darkening them further. Uh, this will darken and brown them a bit. It's sort of a base layer, so we can add further coats of Skeleton Horde Contrast as we want. So we're going to start with applying a layer all over the like undersides of his fat folds. And then for the parts where it transitions, we'll do little feather strokes up. We then go back with Magos Purple and we add this in as well. And we use, uh, we apply flat coats onto the most bottom areas of the folds and then we do feathered strokes up and down for any transition areas. Now, to understand it best, think of his skin as a patina of color and we are just applying it here and there to add more color and flavor throughout it. Now we're going to go with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish. Now this varnish is going to give the skin a dead flesh look, or just a dead, there's no shine in it. Now one thing that you really want to keep uh, in note is that since we've only used washes and thin uh, sprays from an airbrush, this uh, skin color is very thin and can be rubbed off very easily. So we do want to seal this in to help preserve it as we're still working on the model. And now with Doom Bull Brown, we're going to use this and we're going to paint all the leather straps that are on his body. And now with Lead Belcha and Agrax Earthshade, we will now paint all the basic metal bits, the little metal buckles, his chain mail, and the metal spikes on his scythe, and as well as the metal on the blade. And once that is done, we're going to then use Agrax Earthshade and we're going to coat all these metal pieces again. I then go back with an old brush and I overbrush, not dry brush, a lead belcher back onto many of the, into, onto the chain mail, onto the blade, and onto many of the bits to bring in a shine onto the top raised areas of the models. 
now with Bestigor Flesh and Fugan Orange, we're going to use this to paint the fat, the open fat deposits on it. We're going to start with a base layer of Bestigor Flesh on all these large open sores. There are some smaller sores, and we're just not going to touch those. And once that is done, we're going to go take Fugan Orange and we're going to apply it all over the fat deposit. Upon finishing that, we will then go back with Best Core Flesh and highlight the fat deposits themselves. And then we will go back with Fugan Orange again and then cover it all. We will also use the Fugan Orange on several areas of the bruising and the sores or where the metal is pushed in, just for more added color on the skin. And then we will go back and do a final highlight with another layer of best decor flesh on the most highlighted raised areas of the fat deposits. And then with Rakarth flesh, we're going to paint these little uh, straps that are on his left armor plate. In the end, this was a bad idea, it just doesn't look good. And then I'm going to take Agrax Urshade and apply it over these straps and add some dark into them. Still, doesn't look good. I should have just painted leather like the rest. I thought these were bandages, so I went with that at the time. And now with Mornfang Brown, Agrax Earthshade, and XV88, we're going to paint the, like, leather flaps or clothing on him. Loin cloths, that's it. We're going to start off with a base layer of Mornfang Brown. And once that is done, we're going to go with Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to coat the whole, well, loin cloths front and back with Agrax Earthshade. And once that is done, we're going to go back with Mornfang Brown and we're going to highlight the raised areas, which is easy to spot with the Agrax Earthshade. And once that is done, we're going to go and use Agrax Earthshade again. And once that is done, we're going to go and highlight again with Mornfang Brown. And then once that's done, we're going to go with a one-to-one -one mix of Mornfang Brown and XV88 and highlight. Although looking back, it was too much. It should have been two parts Mornfang and one part XV88. It was too bright, so I highlighted the whole thing. And because it was so bright, I decided to go back over it with another layer of Agrax Earthshade to tone it down. Now with Lead Belcha, mix one-to-one -one with Castellan Green, or about one-to-one. -one. You just want to be able to see the metal specs through the Castellan Green. We're going to apply this all over his armor, his uh, leg armor and his shoulder pads and such. Once that's done, we're going to coat them in a layer of Agrax Earthshade to add a dark earthy color to them. And then with Lead Belcher, we're going to go and dry brush several of his metal plates, or all his metal plates. Also notice that there are some spots where it is just pure Lead Belcher instead of the mix of Lead Belcher and Castellan Green. It's because the metal plate on his body and the one below his shoulder pad, I want them to be a different color so they stand out. If it was all green, it would just blend too much. And now with XV88, I'm going to go and paint all these little ropes on his uh, staff and such and such. Ow. 
After going through it, I then go with Skeleton Horde Contrast and I start applying it to the ropes. And then I decide, you know what, this is a nice orangish color. I'm going to apply it to the staff. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply this to his metal blade to make it look grimy. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply this to all the metal, because it looks kind of good. And I go back with some lead belcher and dry brush on certain areas, where like there's the blade, uh, the edges, whatever. And then with Balthazar Gold and Agrax Earthshade, we're going to paint this little emblem that, or medallion that is on his chest. Start with Balthasar Gold, and once that's finished, we apply a thin layer of Agrax Earthshade onto him. And then once that's done, we just re-highlight it. I want this to be brass because I want it to stand out in the overall rest of the model. If it's the same as the rest of the metals, then it's you're not going to pick it out. And now with Caliban Green, you'll notice that, I don't know how to describe it, like stuff is leaking out of him. We're going to paint that with a base layer of Caliban Green for now. This is going to be a foundation paint for some effects later. And now with Pallid Witch Flesh and Skeleton Horde Contrast, we're going to paint this one maggot that is on his stomach. Pallid Witch Flesh first. Then once that dries with a hair dryer, skeleton horde contrast on top, and done. And now with Vallejo Pigment Burnt Umber, Riser Rust, and this oxide color, spoiler, I never use the oxide color, we're gonna grime up the metal. Now we're gonna start off with the pigments, and you just apply water to it, and you want it to be as thick as you like, and I just apply this all over the metal. His shoulder pads, his feet, his blades, just whatever. Once that is dried, I go back with Rise of Rest and I pick out like places where it looks like the metal has been eaten away. Not dented, but like melted away or eaten over time or something. Now with the Army Painter War Paints Anti-Shine Matte Varnish, we're going to apply this all over the metal. Now the pigment powder will fly everywhere once it's used, so we're going to use this to seal it in and this will help keep the metal shine on it. Now with XV88, Mornfang Brown, and Rhinoxide, we're going to paint the horns on his head. Now we're going to start from light to black, so we're going to, or light to dark, we're going to do with XV88 and we're going to coat all the horns in this color. Once that is done, we will do a one-to-one -one of XV88 and Mornfang Brown and then paint like five-sixths of the horns up. And then once that is done, we're going to go with Mornfang Brown and we're going to paint half of the thing going up. And then once that is done, we will go with a one-to-one -one of Mornfang and Rhinox and paint the last two-sixths of the horn. And then at the very top, we're going to take Rhinox hide and paint the last sixth of the horn. And with Plague Bearer's contrast paint, we're going to apply this all over the intestines that are coming out of him. This is going to add a sickening color to him.
And then from out of left field comes Tesseract Glow. Now, there are parts of his body that have like bumps, like like growths on them. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer them in Tesseract Glow. This is a very light glow color. So it's gonna be a nice, bright, simple color greenish. And then once that's done, I'm gonna go over with Plague Bearer contrast paint and like paint it into the recesses. And then with Skeleton Horde Contrast, I'm going to go around and paint the rims of a lot of the open holes he has on him, and just add it on some other places for just some more color. And then with Rhinox Hide and with a feathery brush technique, we're going to paint up and down onto the edges of his scythe. You know when blood dries it turns brown? Well, we're going to add that to his whip. And then with AK Interactive Ultra Matte again, we're going to go back and re-varnish again his staff and his flesh. Not his organs. Not his organs. After that, I then take Blood for the Blood God and Nurgle's Rot, and I'm going to apply this wherever you need to. This is where you have fun, and just apply sickness to him. With the Blood for the Blood God, we're going to apply this to all his open wounds and holes. Where the fat deposits are, we're not going to fill them in, we're just going to fill like the edges of the hole. I'm going to fill the small holes with it as well. We're then going to take the Nurgle's Rot and we're going to apply it to the drops of Caliban Green we painted. The Nurgle's Rot will show through in some areas, so the Caliban Green will be a good like base coat. And apply this wherever you need. I did actually make some mistakes and uh, got some paint onto the skin, so I used the Nurgle's Rot to cover up these mistakes here and there. And it is done. Yeah, there was a lot of detail on this model, and this is just one third of it. Whew! Well, now, towards the end of this, I'm gonna have to give myself a rating, and I. I give myself an honest rating, but I feel. that this is. Mm, I don't give point fives. I, I'm gonna have to. I'm. In my head, I'll round up and say this is a 7 out of 10 for me. I feel like I could have done better. I don't know what it is, but like something just didn't turn out well. Like the metal plates, the armor didn't do as well. The pigment powder I applied really just seemed to fizzle out. It didn't really show through. The skin was great. The basic skin color that was done from the airbrushing was a basic patina, and then I got to add all the colors and stuff in it. And that that is the reason why I chose Nurgle to paint and stuff because Nurgle is the Chad painter versus the Virgin Corn Slanesh and Zinch who have just one color scheme and boredom. With this, Nurgle is a huge uh, patina of greens, blues, reds, browns, and other nasty colors. But overall, I'm gonna have to give him a seven out of ten just for Otto. The rest of the model may. Mm, bring up the value because so here's the thing about him he is one third of the model kit but when you look at him from a distance he's just on the top there the major focus people are going to see is the big body Girk, the younger brother so him being on top he has to look distinctly different from the area around him his white skin and his metal armor he's the only one who has that in these three so you'll be able to noticeably pick out these colors from everything else his uh, wizard brother, I don't remember his name, is going to be covered in robes, so he'll have to be color-wise different than the rest so you can pick him out in the distance. Basically, one of the core ideas of my painting is that if you stand five to six feet away from your model, you have to be able to distinctly see like the arms, the legs, the heads, or stuff, 
noticeable things like if you can do that you can pick them out in the distance then you've done pretty well that it doesn't like turn into all into a blur and a blob and if I stand five or six feet away from this guy I can clearly see his head his arms his legs his stomach I can pick out specific details on him all right now this did take a while to come out unfortunately I had some IRL bad stuff happen my computer passed away and well here's its replacement and a bunch of other crap happened but now it's back I'm back to editing videos now I was promising battle reports that still is not going to happen yet because uh, I lost Photoshop and I was planning to do a lot of cool things with that but coming up next will be the the wizard brother of the Glotkin I'm gonna do mostly focusing on robes and fire effects for that one so stay tuned for that that'll come relatively soon and uh, oh yeah Alright, leave a comment if you want to comment, leave a like if you liked it, uh, subscribe if you want to see more, more will come, those battle reports will come, which is more of a, not really a battle report, but more of a, I'm focusing on like what the Indominus box actually has, and more of a critique of what it sells, and battle report wise, and uh, yeah, so more will come soon, see you then, bye.